Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And it is my pleasure to meet you on this Tuesday, November 29th, for the moment that we have been provided for prayer and devotion. And as we come this morning, won't you join me in a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we are so thankful to call upon you this day. We are thankful for this day that you have set before us. And now will we make the most of all that you have provided for us. May we give you glory throughout this day that it might lead to even greater days. So we ask now that we might open our ears so that we may hear, open our eyes so that we may see, but most of all, open our hands so that we may receive and do. This we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our reading on this day comes out of the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, the 21st through the 24th verses. And in Luke's Gospel, we hear these words on this day. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Amen. After listening to Luke's words, I would have you really note on this day that this is a moment when we are clearly able to see that Jesus is rejoicing. While we look at other moments in the scriptures, there are moments where we are listening to Jesus, moments where we are instructed by Jesus, moments where we are keenly observing the miracles performed by Jesus. We are perhaps celebrating, we're getting excited, sometimes we're challenged, sometimes we're very uh, ref deep in reflection, but this is a moment when we get to note and to see Jesus rejoicing. It makes you wonder immediately what would make him rejoice? What would cause him to get so excited? What is it that we get to see in this moment where it's not just simply looking at ourselves or trying to find out what would please us, but let's ask the question, what pleases him? And what makes him rejoice? Jesus is rejoicing that the disciples have this opportunity to see and to hear all that is being revealed. That if there's something that would make joy come into Jesus' spirit. It's the fact that we see and that we hear what he has revealed unto us. Simply put, it's like the teacher says in those moments where they're teaching children and the light bulb comes on. He gets excited when we see more than what we've seen. We hear more than what we've heard because we know that that may lead to doing more than what we've done. This is the excitement that is present. What a difference it makes when we have the right pers perspective. When Jesus comes into our life, when we allow him to be Lord of our life, when we're following and commit our life, we see things differently, hear things differently. Our perspective change, changes. We're able to see great things in small things. We're able to see perhaps what others are not paying attention to. 
we're able to do what many would call impossible. God wants to reveal all that he has in order that our lives will be transformed, our relationships will be renewed, our relationships will be lifted, and the world in which we live would be a witness of beloved community. Jesus comes and speaks to us, is present with us, gave his life for us, that we might have a different perspective on life and what we do. As always, someone shared a story with me about three stonemasons who were working in the same place. And in that place, they all had big stones in front of them, not too far from each other, but they had three stones that they were working on. These three stonemasons, as they were carving, had someone walk up to them, to the first stonemason. He asked, what are you doing? The first stonemason said, I'm carving a stone. Took a few steps down, and he walked to the second one, and he asked him, what are you doing? Second stonemason looked up at him and he said, here as he was chipping away, he said, I'm building a wall. Well, he walked down to the third stonemason who was chipping away at the same size stone, working on uh, all that he was carving and uh, in similar fashion, but he asked him the same question. He said, what are you doing? That stonemason looked up at him and he says, I'm building a great cathedral to the glory of God. Three men doing the same tasks, but looking at their work differently. Today, may we look at what he's put in our hands, and no matter how small it may be, see how great it can become. Amen. I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer on this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. He has given us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hands to do. May all of them be used for the great things on this day and in the days yet to come. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace.